This is example one on section 4.8. It's a very basic problem where we have a right triangle. We're going to try to find its other remaining angles and sides. Using stuff you basically should know from geometry, but now we've covered like all of it, um, we're going to start with something simple. It's a right triangle. Call this angle C and move the angle C is okay. Call this little a. This B and call this C. There we go. Alright, that's all we have. An angle and oh we were given a side. We were told that B is 19.4. So we have an angle, we have this side, and we know it's a right triangle. How can we find all the other angles and all the other sides very easily. Um, to start with, to find the other angle, this is 90, this is 34.2, sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180. Hopefully, you know that. So we could just add them up and subtract. I believe this comes out to be 54.8. Duh, that is what it is 54.8 degrees. And that would be our angle of B, which I forgot to label. So we've got all the angles. Now, how would I find the sides, like C or A? And this is something which was a stumbling block on the first quiz for a lot of people. Well, let's just start with, oh, I don't know, pick one. Let's go A. If this angle is what I have, I can say, okay, relative to this angle, A is an opposite. And I have been given the, relative to this angle, adjacent. Let's see, opposite and adjacent. Which trigonometric function uses opposite and adjacent? There's only one, it's opposite over adjacent, and it's equal to tangent. So what we can properly construct is the tangent of 34.2 equals the unknown opposite, which we'll call A, over the known adjacent, which we'll call 19.4, and then we can solve this for A. It's not a hard problem to solve. This is just something you plug into your calculator, you get a decimal, and then to solve for A, we multiply by 19.4 on both sides, cancel out, multiply this by 19.4, and this, whatever it is, will be your A. And I think it turns out that A is 13.18. Now we could have done that several other ways. Oh, you guys can see that, right? Yeah. Um, we could have done that several other ways. We could have, say, relative to this angle, said, well, A is my adjacent, and B is my opposite, and then you have a slightly different fraction, which is still would have used tangent. Um, yeah, I think that's one way you could do it, at least initially, is using tangent, just your ratios could be different. And then how to find C? Well, I mean, technically, now that you have B and A, you could use the Pythagorean theorem and find C, but you don't even need to do that. You could use trig functions again, look. Relative to, you want to do relative to this angle or this angle? It doesn't matter. Let's use this one, just because it's different. So relative to this angle, I have B. Yes, I know I have A, but I'm just going to pretend I just have B. Um, that's an opposite. And I want to find the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse. And that corresponds to the trig function sine. So... My room, so I'll just erase this and rewrite it. We have the sine of now 55.8. That will be equal to the opposite relative to the 55.8, so 19.4. 
over the hypotenuse C. Now I like this one because to solve this, it's a little harder. Arguably, there's easier ways I could have done this, but this is a good example of if you're doing it this way or for some reason you're forced to do it this way, when you solve for the variable in the denominator, don't just try to blindly say, oh, it's just the same as the last one and multiply the trig function by the number, because that's not going to be right. To solve for C, you're going to have to multiply both sides by C. These will cancel out. And then divide both sides by whatever the sine of 55.8 is. In the end, you'll have this. C is equal to 19.4 over the sine of 55.8, which should work out to be, and this is where I was referred to, either my calculator or the book, 23.46. Did I really get two decimal places? Yeah, there you go. We found uh, A, B, we had B. We found A, C, and we found uh, angle B. Easy enough example.